Good morning, learners! It is a fabulous day. I'm your teacher, Labjin Malapo. In today's lesson, we will going to discuss the eighth part of speech. The conjunction, interjection, preposition, verb, adverb, adjectives, noun, and pronoun. Let's begin with a noun. When we say noun, it is a word that names a place, person, things, or an idea. Basically, anything that's a thing is a noun. Whether you are talking about basketball court, London, teacher, or Monday. Here are the examples of noun. Teacher, John, Jose, London, America, and students. Nouns are fall into different categories, so there are different types of noun. The first one is the proper noun. A proper noun is a name that identifies a particular person, place, things, or an idea. A proper noun is always capitalized in English no matter where they fall in a sentence because they end those nouns with a specific name. Here are the examples of proper noun. Rodrigo Duterte, London, Monday, and Google. Another types of noun is a common noun. So a common noun is a noun that refers to people or things in general. For example, country, building, toddler. Another types of noun is concrete noun. So a concrete noun is a noun which refers to people or things that exist physically. It can be seen, touch, heard, smell, or taste. For example, dog, building, plant, and animal. The next is the abstract noun. So an abstract noun is a noun which refers to people, things, ideas, qualities, or conditions that are not exist physically. It can't be seen or touched. For example, danger, happiness, time, and humor. Next is the collective noun. So a collective noun are the words that name a group or collection of individual in a way that they are being discussed as a single entity. In simple terms, when we say collective nouns, it represents the collection of an individual. For example, audience, family, government, and team. The next is the count and mass nouns. So noun can be either countable or uncountable. Countable noun or count nouns are those who refer to something that can be counted. Unlike countable noun, uncountable noun are refer to something that can't be counted. These are the substance or concept that we cannot divide into separate elements. Example, liquid, powder, and gas. The last type of noun is the possessive noun. A possessive noun is a noun that show ownership or possession by adding s or just to the end. In most cases, possessive nouns are formed by adding an apostrophe s to the noun. Or if the noun is plural and already ends in s, only an apostrophe. For example, John's car and my parents' house. Another part of speech is the pronoun. So a pronoun, it is a word that takes the place of a noun. It is the substitute for a noun. Pronouns are the words like he, she, it, they, ours, themselves, some, and each. For example, instead of saying LJ lose her money, you can say he lose her money. There are types of pronouns. The first is the demonstrative pronoun. So demonstrative pronoun are pronoun that points a specific object. Demonstrative pronoun are pronoun that tell us whether it is singular or plural and whether it is near or far. Demonstrative pronoun are the words like this, that, and those. For example, this is my bag. The next is the indefinite pronoun. So indefinite pronouns are referred to people or things without being specific. We use indefinite pronoun to refer people or things without saying exactly who or what they are. So indefinite pronoun are the words like all, some, many, several, anyone, nobody, and no one. Next is the interrogative pronoun. So an interrogative pronoun are used to ask question. It includes the word what, which, whom, and whose. For example, to whom it is being developed. 
Another part of speech is the adjective. So when we say adjectives, these are the words that describe a noun. Think about your favorite movie. How would you describe it? You might say it is funny or suspenseful. The next is the verb. When we say verb, these are the words that express action or state of being. For example, run, jump, and sing. There are types of verb. The first one is the action verb. So an action verb express an activity that a person or things can do. For example, Jean eats cake. So eating is something that Jean can do. The next is the stative verb. So a stative verb express state rather than action. It is typically relates to a state of being, thoughts, or emotions. For example, he feels elated. The next is the auxiliary verb. So an auxiliary verb is also known as the helping verbs. It accompanies a main verb to help express the tense, voice, or mood. The most common auxiliary verb are be, do, and have. For example, Ken has eaten all the pies. Here, the auxiliary verb has help to express the tense. The next is the modal verb. So a modal verb is a type of auxiliary verb used to express ideas such as ability, possibility, permission, and obligation. The modal verbs are the words like can, could, might, will, shall, and should. For example, Jerry Koch can eat a lot of egg. In here, the modal verb can help to express the ability. Another part of speech is the conjunction. So a conjunction are the words that links other words, phrase, or clause together. It allows you to form an elegant sentence to avoid choppiness. There are types of conjunction, the coordinating conjunction and the subordinating conjunction. Coordinating conjunction are used to join part of a sentence that are grammatically equal. For example, Love and Jean went to the mall. The water was warm, but I didn't go to swimming. The next is the subordinating conjunction. When we say subordinating conjunction, it is a word or phrase that links dependent clause to an independent clause. For example, I went to swimming although it was cold. The next one is the interjection. So an interjection is a part of speech that demonstrates the emotion or feelings of the author. Interjection are the words or phrase that can stand alone or be placed before or after the sentence. In the following examples, the interjection are shaded. For example, Hey, get out of the floor! There are basic types of interjection. Let's begin with the interjection for greeting. These interjections are used to indicate emotion when you are met with some people. It includes hi, hello, and hey. Another type of interjection is the interjection of joy. This interjection are used to indicate emotion of happiness on a sudden happy event that occurred. This include wow, hooray, and yippee. For example, wow, I fast exam. Next is the interjection of approval and praise. This interjection are used by the author to express strong feeling of agreement and praise on something that happened. This include bravo, brilliant, and well done. Next type is the interjection for grip and pain. This interjection are used by the speaker to express strong emotion of grip on something unfortunate that happened. This include O oh, and ouch. For example, ouch, I hurt my foot. The last type of interjection is the interjection of surprise. This interjection are used by the speaker to express a strong sense of surprise. This include wow. The last part of speech is the preposition. These words are usually tells where or when something in relation to someone else. Preposition are used to link noun, pronoun, or phrase to other word within a sentence. They act to connect the people to objects. Here are the list of some common preposition: above, across, behind, among, toward, under, between, and beyond. That's the end of our discussion. I hope you learned from our lesson for today. God bless and good luck learners!